Hey everybody, what is going on? It is Dunbar Snack Bar here with MLB 13, the show, and we've got some more Lou Gehrig gameplay coming your way right here. And honestly, I know a lot of you guys have been waiting a long time to be able to see this. I've been waiting a long time to be able to see it myself and also to say it, but here is Lou Gehrig finally wearing the pinstripes of a New York Yankee uniform. And I think it's really cool that we get to start off here at home at Yankee Stadium too. So... Uh, I got a little bit better of an understanding here of what we're going to be seeing with Lou Gehrig for the next little bit. Uh, I will be coming off of the bench. So anytime that Mark Teixeira does need a day off, that's when Lou Gehrig is going to be, you know, of course, coming in. But I am preparing here for things to change quite a bit with Lou. Uh, probably not going to play first base. I've been working on increasing, uh, you know, my arm, the accuracy and power of it, my fielding abilities, and also my speed because I, I have a feeling... Uh, that I'm going to be uh, moved over to the outfield, specifically left field. I think that's what we'll be seeing Lou or in the DH spot. Because from a standpoint of what's going to be best for the team, I don't think that it would be that smart to be like, hey, Mark Teixeira, you do something else. We're going to have Lou Gehrig come in, especially when Lou is uh, not as good as Mark Teixeira is right now by way of attributes. And I, I can make a difference in other parts of the field. So I know it doesn't hold true necessarily to what we think of with Lou Gehrig, primarily being a first baseman, but I'm okay if we have to make that, that type of change. All right, so here in the first inning, we're going to start things off with just a little fielding play, just to hit over uh, to A-Rod at third. No problem with that throw over to Gehrig. So that is going to be his first out. All right, so now we get to see his first at-bat of uh, his Major League Baseball career. So with Lou Gehrig, there's been a lot of great things that have come about uh, from playing this mode. I think it's really kind of helped me get this game figured out because you guys know this is the first year that I have played uh, MLB The Show. I did buy 12 and played a few games of it here, just kind of getting prepped up for this. But um, one of the things is, uh, and I've always said this, is MLB 2K feels more like a baseball game. This feels more like a baseball simulator here. So with all the times that I've been able to, you know, take an at-bat with Lou Gehrig, I've gotten a lot better at plate discipline, and I think that's really enhanced the game. Because, like, with Timmy Timmons last year when I was doing that, I would just swing it just about everything because I could. But now I'm playing a lot smarter, and in some of the spring training games, I think that's what really made the difference here between a hit and me getting out was just waiting for a good pitch right over the heart of the plate. So 2-0 count right now to Lou Gehrig. Got to take a look at uh, what pitches to expect. I was thinking four-seamer, and I'm glad that I did. So that's ball three. And in a situation like this, you always want to take the pitch. I mean, some people will say, yeah, go ahead and ambush it because you know it's going to be over the heart of the plate. But you never know. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, take this next pitch, whatever it is. And that is going to be ball four. That's why I don't go ahead and ambush it because you could be completely off and you've just gone ahead and giving the pitcher a strike rather than end up getting walked. All right, so 1-0 count, two outs. Nobody has a run quite yet. Runners on first and second. This one goes deep. Looks like it's just going to get caught. At. Actually, that's a home run. This might be the first time with Lou Gehrig, or actually any of my player now that I think about it, probably two or three. Um, but off the top of my head, I can't think of anything where I've actually come home because somebody else hit a home run. That's kind of refreshing. All right, so 3-0 is the score right now. Uh, like I mentioned, I mean, this is something that is absolutely awesome for me to be able to do. Uh, of all the MLB players that I've ever come across, or I'm going to even take a, a higher uh, you know, uh, thought on this here, my all-time favorite professional athlete is Lou Gehrig, just of what he uh, means to me as a person. Because, I mean, you look at his numbers, and, of course, his numbers are phenomenal, especially for the period... Uh, of time that he played in baseball, which is completely unheard of, except for, of course, Babe Ruth. But one thing besides his career that Lou Gehrig is known for was him contracting the disease ALS, which is more commonly known as Lou Gehrig's disease. And this is a terrible, terrible disease, and, and what it does to people um, is absolutely miserable. Like, if you know who Stephen Hawking is and the condition that he is in where he can't speak, um, he sits in a wheelchair all day, really has no uh, functions at all with his body, I mean, I just can't imagine what it would be like uh, to, to have that type of disease. And then when you think about it with Luke Gehrig, I think that in some respects, the mental aspect of being told that he had this disease and see his body deteriorate would, would be a lot harder because this man went ahead and he became famous 
and he provided for himself and his family through the use of his body. As an athlete, that's really what you know earns the paycheck is the way that you can use your body. Um, and to slowly see that get taken away from him must be absolutely must have been absolutely horrible. Um, you know, it got to the point here when he was giving his uh, luckiest man speech. And as they were giving him plaques and awards and things like that to honor him and commemorate everything that he did as a Yankee, he was having a hard time even being able to hold those up. He had a hard time swinging a bat even. So his last season was uh, was just absolutely terrible compared to everything else. But when you fig uh, figure in the disease that he had, I mean, it all makes sense. So we know people who, when something bad happens to them, they're all about, like, poor me. You know, and, and kind of try and make some sob story and get people to feel sorry for him. But I think that with what was going on with Lou Gehrig, it would be very easy. And I think in some respects it would be acceptable for him to get up in front of everybody and talk about just how horrible it was for him and, and what he's going through right now and, and try to get support from everybody. But he didn't do that. In fact, he did the complete opposite thing. You know, he, he talked about how he was the luckiest man you know, in the world because... He had gotten a chance to be able to play Major League Baseball and play for the Yankees. Uh, and I just think that the way that he carried himself through that and the message that he gave to everybody else, even calling uh, his contracting of the disease just a bad break. All right? I mean, he didn't say poor me or anything. He said it was a bad break. I mean, he truly is the example of you know how, how I want to uh, face adversity. Um, and the type of man that I want to be when, when challenges kind of come my way. You know, just be positive about it and just kind of work through it. But anyway, so because of that, that's why I chose Lou Gehrig. I mean, to kind of honor him and, you know, do what I can to pay a little tribute to him. I know playing a video game really isn't that much, but still, to me, I think it's kind of cool. All right, so strike two right now for Lou Gehrig. I'm kind of adjusting here to a 99 mile an hour fastball. I haven't really gone against that at all this game or actually in a while but 0-2 count this one goes deep in the center field and this is going to be a home run so Lou Gehrig's first major league hit is also his first major league home run and that's going to be a two run blast right here so Lou Gehrig wow what a great way to start off his career or second career I don't know how you'd go ahead and describe it but anyway Lou Gehrig, wow, really making this exciting right here in this game. All right, I think what's really cool too, maybe I'm just looking too much into this, is in center field is where a lot of the historical stuff uh, is kept for the Yankees to be able to display for the fans. And where does it hit just to the left of? Lou Gehrig's retired number. I think Lou Gehrig definitely deserved to be the first person in professional sports to get his number retired. That's really cool. And, of course, everybody's celebrating. you got to celebrate that. All right, so I'm really excited that we were able to go ahead and do that. So let's get back to the game right now. Now, the game really isn't going too great. We're down 9-6 to six here in the top of the eighth. So Lou Gehrig kind of helping out, uh, coming home a couple times in this game. But we've really got a lot to be able to overcome here if we want to come away with the win. So a double play right there is going to help us out here in the eighth. So we've just got one more out to go, and we are done. We'll head on into the ninth inning here. All right, so sounds like, or it looks like, Luke Gehrig is going to be a part of the final out right here. So, all right, not coming over to me. It's going to go to Robinson Cano, who digs that one out of the ground and makes the throw over to Gehrig. So we're done with inning number eight. Now we just go ahead and jump to inning number nine. So still nine to six. We weren't to get, or we weren't able to get anything going here in the bottom of the eight. Two-two count here with two outs. Off-speed pitch coming, and uh, I'm not going to try and charge it. Robinson Cano again with another great play over there in second. All right, so here we are in the bottom of the ninth. Lou Gehrig comes up to the plate. Honestly, I don't think that there's too much that Lou's going to be able to do. I'm not expecting another home run because that, uh, that was actually a miracle, I think, that I got it right here because I only got a few in spring training. I didn't get too many at bats, but still. Um, I wasn't thinking I was going to get it here at the beginning of the game. Two outs here. Runner on second. Ball one. Way too low. Glad I laid off that one here because if I wasn't working on plate discipline and, and kind of getting a lot better at that, 
if I had swung, there's a very strong chance it just would have been a topper that went right back to the pitcher or just stayed in the infield, and really nothing would have happened right there. So that one goes deep in the left center here. So the run's going to come home. Luke Gehrig is going to head over to second, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to keep him right there as well. So not going to try to risk, of course, going over to third. Got to hope that the rest of my team actually kind of comes together. Now we're only down by two runs here. So Lou might have just started out this two out, or started out a two out rally. Count is full right here. That one's gonna be way too low. So that changeup is gonna be ball four. Now I'm not alone on the base pass. All right, so runners on first and second. A-Rod is gonna, uh, A-Rod's not coming up next. I can't remember who is. It might be uh, Eduardo Nunez. Off the top of my head, I can't remember here, but 2-0 count now, so pitchers definitely had a few problems. This one goes right down the line in left field, gets past third base. So Lou Gehrig's going to come home, and now we've got runners on second and third here. So a good hit could end up winning the game, and A-Rod now comes up next here. And he is able to get that hit, so Lou Gehrig started off that two-out rally for us here. We end up winning the game. So a great, great performance for Lou Gehrig. In his first major league game, goes two for four. Also got the walk, a home run, and a double, too. So all around, I love this. Eduardo Nunez gets player of the game, despite the great performance by Lou Gehrig. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. We're going to be seeing a lot more Lou Gehrig in that New York Yankee uniform. So this is going to be very, very great to be able to play, and hopefully it'll be great for you to watch as well. So subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, all that great jazz. All you got to do is check the description below. But you are phenomenal people, you guys. Do not ever forget that. And as always, I hope you have a good one.